It is really hot over here. Woo! It's the Holy Spirit heat. Don't, I don't know see. Know about that. <laughs> it's just I'm hot. <laughs> I can feel it. What's happening? Your Teachable Tuesday was praise hands, praise hands, praise hands, praise hands, praise hands. Five praise hands. Wow. That's a lot of praise hands for that Teachable Tuesday. Praise the Lord. I'm the, loving Paul to reading Acts with a friend during Easter. That's sweet because I had the opposite feeling about Paul after I was, reading I Acts. was reading something. <laughs> I've been personally reading 1 Corinthians yeah. forever. Right. And anyway, I read this thing last night. I think yeah. I need to tell you, so I guess I'm going to tell all of you. Yeah. You know how Paul is always like saying the silliest things? Yeah. Remember the poor, which I was eager to do. Did you start? Start Second Corinthians yet? No, I'm we were going to do that together, no, right? No, no. Well, this is why I'm still on 14. Okay. I can't seem to move past it. Uh huh. Now I'm not going to be able to find it. Share your questions while we're while yeah. we're looking for this. He's just so silly. You know what I mean? He's a sweetheart, that Paul. Favorite Bible study apps and study guides. Ooh. My favorite Bible study guide is the Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh! I was going to say no. my favorite Bible study is the Bible. <laughs> Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. But we do like the Ignatius study Bible. So That's I'll true. Show, I'll... That's like a good commentary for us. This one's helpful. Although yesterday, if you were at VBS, you saw it not be helpful. Jokes on <laughs> you, Ignatius study Bible. Still waiting on somebody to <laughs> email me with... Uh, we did we look up who wrote this? 417. Galatians 417. I could use a little help. Beth, did you find it? No. We're just it's not in there. We're just Well, I'm just waiting. talking. I'm not looking. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't Man. say who wrote this commentary. Oh my gosh, here it is. I found it. Listen. Oh, Scott Hahn. We'll, we'll email Scott. We'll email him. Mr. Hahn. Okay, so Paul's talking about prophecy and in tongues and how all these things should be used for building up the church, right? And he's basically saying like, don't pray in tongues unless someone's there to interpret. Otherwise you just sound holier than everybody else, but oh. no one knows what you're praying. Okay. Anyway, that was a paraphrase. Thanks, Paul. That was a loose paraphrase. But then he says, for you may give thanks well enough praying in tongues, but the other person is not built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. <laughs> what? What is this word? That's literally, what? that is literally a word in scripture and I'm like dying about it. I don't even understand. I kind of feel like he's saying, like I'm gonna oh. give you this word about praying in tongues, but just so that you know that I'm not saying praying in tongues is wrong, I actually pray in oh, tongues. I <laughs> but it's just funny to me. Who is standing there always interpreting Paul? Barnabas is just right there. Timothy? Silas? Taking notes? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I thank God that I pray in tongues more than all of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. What a silly guy. That is a scripture. That's so funny. In the Bible. What anyway. A, what a silly guy. Favorite books about Catholicism? Ooh. Rome Sweet Home. This goes, we this also that. answers easiest way to introduce friends to Catholicism when they're hesitant. Rome I think Sweet these Home. These books are helpful. Taking off my shoes. I'm getting cozy over here. My favorite book is called Rome Sweet Home. What was it called? <laughs> Just in case somebody missed it. I don't know. Rome Sweet Home okay. by Mr. Mr. Han. Scott also. Han. We'll email, when we email him about Galatians 4 we'll 17, highly... we will also tell him how much we love Rome and Sweet recommend Home. Rome Sweet Home. Rome Sweet Home. Just One more time, the time for the you. people in the back. Rome Sweet Home. Home. What's book. your favorite book about Catholicism? About? After that. Catholicism. Like to learn about it. You know, it might be. I also mm, Rome, sweet home. I also love the Catechism a lot. Wow, that's a great. That's a great answer. It's a really. really I was just. I was really just reading it for reference prior to the TT, and I was like, I gotta sit down and read this systematically. I'm gonna get closer to you. <laughs> <laughs> answer to prayer, right there. That's too what close. I would love. Too I would close love for everyone's just comfort. Be close. Do you have another Bible study or app? Do you want to recommend to Julia besides the Bible and the Holy Spirit? And the Ignatius Catholic Study and Bible. Ignatius study. And the Ignatius Catholic and the Catechism. Study Guides and the Catechism. Catechism is very helpful. Like books to recommend to other people. Or like apps. Like we used to do the first five app. I loved the first five app. Yeah. You know, I, again, star of the show today, Scott Hahn. I don't know yeah, if you've heard what? of him, but I think there are many, many books, especially for someone interested in Catholicism, he writes topically. And they all um, are backed up in scripture. So if you, if your friend has questions about Mary, yeah. read Hail Holy Queen. Eucharist. If your friend has questions about the Eucharist or about the Mass, read I The Lamb's Supper. That's your favorite book. Oh, that's, uh, I'm sorry, I was saying the Eucharist. I didn't hear you oh. say Mass, but yes, Mass. Yeah, Eucharist. Lamb's Mass. Supper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, he talks about the Eucharist. Happens in Mass, you know? Yeah. I think he has a book about the Eucharist. What? Which Maybe one? we could Googs Eucharist Scott Hahn book. 
Okay. I bet something Anybody? would come up. I see. I see. Look at this. I What's see happening? recommendations. Bishop Barron has, has great books. He has a lot of great books. I have not read his books. Have you read any of Bishop Barron's books? I haven't. Which one would you recommend, Grace? I really like him though. What are some other ways you combat overwhelm and anxiety? The word has prayer. The word and prayer are a must, but what yeah. are some other tools and practices you do? Counseling. When I was getting ready to come here this morning, I was like, I think I'm just gonna talk about on Teachable Tuesday. I didn't. That we need help. Like we need people. Yeah. We need a counselor. We need spiritual direction or mentorship. We need somebody to walk with. We need friends. We need a small group. We need a lot of help to yeah. advance in the spiritual life. And then additionally, you need to just take care of your body. I would pay attention to and track your cycle. That has a lot to say about your emotions, about like your physical energy levels. You need to be drinking more water. I can say that with confidence. You're not drinking <laughs> enough water. You want to reach for coffee? You're tired? You're like, get me some caffeine? No, no, water. drink water. We're doing a water challenge today. Now, oh my gosh. Fine. We are? And Nell, Nell spurred us on. I don't know the words. Words escape me. Inspired us. Inspired us. Like again, today? That's providential. Did she really put it in Slack? I mean, initially, Nell's always reminding me to drink water, but. Did, did. Have you guys seen those Instagram challenges? I'm just waiting for the day when mm. you can make up your own challenge so that we can have BIS water challenge and it's like an official thing. You mean like the. And then I can beat everyone. I can't. I can't with her in <laughs> the competition. I just want to drink water to take care of my body. But sometimes it's fun to beat people while you're taking care of yourself. I don't, I don't think it's- What do you guys think? More fun, necessarily. Any other tips for overwhelm and anxiety? More sleep, an evening routine to help your body calm down at the end of the day, help your mind rest. I like to take a shower and pray the rosary. And then I try not to, once I get in the shower and pray my rosary, I'm not looking at my phone the rest of the night. Somebody come over and make sure I don't do that all the time. Sometimes I still do, peeking, peeking on that phone. Get it out of here. I wasn't listening, I was playing tag with stuff's kids. So glad, <laughs> that was just, that was a cry for help. I was asking for accountability and <laughs> the one person, sure to watch this back, the one person so can who can give you. it to me, not even listen, what's new? Just kidding. <laughs> How do you know if you're abiding in the Lord if you're in a state of desolation? Ooh, are you showing up? Are you still praying? Are you persevering? You're abiding, my friend. There you go. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. What do you say to someone who considers herself a Christian but says that the Bible is just a fantasy? Well, that's very interesting. I would ask them lots of questions. Tell me to more clarify. about that. I would ask questions. Do you like Lexio Divina? What ways sure do you do. pray with scripture? I love scripture. I love to read scripture. I love to choose just one takeaway. I love to laugh at St. Paul in scripture. You love to imagine. I love to imagine being in scripture with the Lord in the gospels. You guys, my kids yesterday, one of my daughters doesn't love to read. <clears throat> and then my other one loves to read. So my younger one was like the one who doesn't love to read. She's yeah. like, I just, when I read to myself, I can't like imagine, I can't like mm. take in what I'm reading, right? Like she can only take it in if someone's reading to her. Yeah. So then my older one who loves to read is like, just use your imagination while you're reading and just pretend it's happening in your head. I was like, this is, Wow, this is all we're doing. She's gonna give a so we're doing in scripture. on imaginative prayer. Right. I was like, yeah, that's all. That's all it is, guys. We're just reading in our brain and imagining. I'm starting therapy next week. Should I seek out a Catholic counselor? I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. I saw my counselor last night as I was leaving. I was like, I just, I don't, I'm not ready to leave. Can I pay for a second hour? Just so I can hang out with you. Yeah, I think for me, it has been essential to have a therapist who has a Catholic or Christian worldview. We speak the same language. She understands my lens of the gospel. So I've heard of friends meeting with, you know, like clinical psychologists and, and they'll share about their faith and their understanding of their suffering or their relationships through the lens of the gospel. And they'll say, oh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about forgiveness. Don't worry about uh, reconciliation. Don't worry about morality, you know? They'll, they'll just, but we, we don't have the same worldview. I think it's important that somebody has a faith background. It's been important for me, I should say. That's beautiful. You weren't <laughs> listening. She wasn't even listening, guys. I could be talking about anything. <laughs> I do I agree am. with that. I agree with that. Okay, great. That would be really important to me. 
if I went to counseling. I was there last night and I was like, I just can't wait for Jenna to meet her and start going to Thanks, her. Thanks, Mel. She's amazing. Favorite saint? Ooh, John the Baptist. JP2, St. Gianna, Blessed Pierre, Georgia If you had to pick one, though, it would be John the Baptist. St. Teresa of Avila. What? <laughs> Therese Faustina. She's in there. St. John the Beloved, Peter for Jenna. If Jenna had to pick one. Thank you. It would be Peter. Thank you. Is that true? Yeah. You got it, girl. Well, John the Baptist. If I had to pick one, I would say John the Baptist. He's like, you know the way you like tap the hearts when we're talking and it's like a heart explosion? Yeah. That's how I feel about John the Baptist. Heart explosion. <laughs> I love him. Um, hey, if, if someone had to pick what they were going to read first, in Sinu or he and I, <laughs> which, one, which one should Why they choose? Why would you ask me that? I'm going to say in Sinu. I fell in love with the Eucharist and in Sinu. Deeper. Asterisk. More deeply. In love. Jesus in the Eucharist. I became passionate and committed, passionate about and committed to praying for priests because of Encino. Yeah. I love it. I, I just got to know Jesus's heart in a, such a more intimate way in yeah. Encino. Yeah. And you like he and I. I mean, again, how dare you ask me to choose? <laughs> Why would you put that kind of pressure on me? Yeah. You just got Encino in the mail. That's amazing. He and I is more conversational, which I think is beautiful and I think is very affirming for people to read that Jesus will, just as you're walking to the train, Gabrielle was, yeah. <laughs> that the Lord will like speak to your heart, you know? It doesn't have to be like this long poetic prose. It's just like little sentences, little encouragement, little direction. So I think it's kind of a primer for hearing God's voice in a lot of ways. Um, as someone who's trying to read the Old Testament more, what books should I start with? Well. I love Deuteronomy. Unpopular answer. Love Deuteronomy. Uh, Genesis is action-packed, particularly chapters 37 through 50, which are my personal favorite. Story of Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, for context. Uh, his, like, imprisonment, his rise to power because of his obedience and his humility and his forgiveness and his love. He's incredible. Psalms, Proverbs. <laughs> you could read Proverbs in one month, one chapter a day. I also love mm -hmm. Isaiah. Do you want to say anything today or should I just keep giving a monologue? No, that was good. All good great. answers. I don't have anything to add. I was Ruth maybe, is only four chapters. I was going to maybe say Sirach, but... Really? How sweet. It's just it's like what I good... read with Mike when we were dating. It was a short-lived dating life. They got married, guys. <laughs> they got married. I have a strong devotion to some saints, but I struggle knowing that some made terrible mistakes in life. Do you have any thoughts about reconciling that? I was just reading about people wanting to have relationships with saints who made terrible decisions because then they know there's hope for me. I can make mistakes. I, you know, have sin in my past and I can be holy. Yeah. I think that could be a comfort, you know, that it makes sainthood less unattainable. It makes sainthood more, um, possible it makes saints seem more human or at least that's what it's done for me lauren said how do you discern religious life i would highly recommend our podcast oh, oh gosh with father paul sullivan called just notice <laughs> we talk about it every single week it's so good yeah and i think i say every it's week amazing. it's so good yeah. i think when you're discerning anything in particular a vocation you don't have to discern all at once you yeah. don't have to enter an, a convent tomorrow or a community tomorrow. You can just um, reach out to your vocations director in your diocese. You can have coffee with a religious sister in your area. You can make a visit. Maybe it's even a discernment retreat. You could go on just for the weekend. You could just mention it to a friend. Hey, I'm thinking about this. Will you pray for me? Um, it's, it's all just little steps, right? The scripture talks about um, your word is a lamp to my feet. We're just lighting up one step at a time. That, that's all we really get to know is the next right step. What do you suggest Hi, in dealing with a Protestant family, all Protestant family who doesn't oh. accept your conversion? Oh, that's so hard, Emily. I'm sorry. It, it, that's a lonely experience. First and foremost, you're not alone. The, the Lord is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. Um, and he wants to be with you in that. So to keep telling him everything, you know? about that pain of feeling misunderstood. He understands that and he wants to be a consoler and a comforter to you in that. I would pray for them and I would pray for a faith community uh, where you can really flourish and really be yourself and loved and spurred on in your faith, right, with other Catholic believers. I might try to think about or pray with them 
on the things that you guys have in common. Great. So like if it's your family and you guys pray at mealtime or whatever, like focus on those things that you have in common and continue yeah. the conversation from there. Like we love the same Jesus. We love the same Godhead, you know, mm -hmm. focus on those things. I and love then that. I think like once they see your peace and your joy in your decision, they're going to eventually come around and ask questions and want to be around you. I love that. Just talking about the Lord. We do a Bible study together, you okay. know? Okay, do that. Then you can be like, this is why Catholics believe this. It's like in scripture. You could read John 6. That'll go over well. <laughs> I don't know. It might start conversation. Totally. Depends on how close you guys are. Yeah. Trying well, to restart my prayer life, but constantly feeling shame for being distant. What do you suggest? That's what the evil one wants you to feel. Just keep going one step at a time. That's all he wants you to feel is shame about that. Get out of here. Because it'll discourage you ultimately. Discouragement is from the enemy. Anything that looks, feels, smells like discouragement, it's not of the Lord. Even when we need to grow, when he's calling us to something, it's, it's convicting. There's a lightness, there's a freedom, there's a joy, there's a sense that we can do what God's calling us to do. Um, that's a move of grace. Whereas any kind of shame or discouragement, guilt, pressure, that's the enemy. Any recommendations for books that speak to the practicals of living out theology of the body to better embrace and live out our sexuality in a way pleasing to the Lord? I was actually just reading in the catechism this morning about chastity, which was so beautiful. Um, unrelated to anything, I was just like, hey, look how much good stuff there is in here about purity Where? and chastity in the catechism. Oh, crazy. Um, but all things Christopher West, good news about sex and marriage, theology of the body, theology of the body for beginners. If you just check out his, you know, ministry organization, you'll yeah. find a million resources, excellent resources, talks. He has a podcast as well. Um, yeah. He has 1 million resources. Count them up. Yeah, but that's it. Just one million. Just one million. He's done putting out resources. What about a gazillion? Just jokes. What about a gazillion <laughs> for you Minnesota folks? <laughs> oh, Theology of the Body in One Hour by oh Jason Evers. Oh my goodness. Ever. Well, that's cool. I've never heard it. Oh, is that a book? <laughs> Sounds like it might be a talk. I assume in it one was hour? a talk. Because yeah. you don't know how long it takes people to read stuff. So yeah, you, you can't possibly guarantee promise an hour. that I could read that in an hour, you know? <laughs> Do you have any favorite modest clothing brands? Love your dress, BT Dub. Thank you. <laughs> okay, get real. <laughs> um, no, I don't. I don't. I love. I mean, we love. Um, what's that place that's here? Yeah. That's online? Couldn't think of it. <laughs> but they're where? And ivory. Yeah, I always mix it up with that that restaurant, mm. Olive and Ivy, but it's Ren and, is it Ivory, Ivory or Ivy? Ivory. Ren and Ivory. Yeah. The warehouse is here. Here. here in the Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, so they have adorable modest clothing. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with us. Well, how'd I'm you gonna know drink that? some more water. How did you know that? Love okay, you, yeah. bye bye. Hi guys, Jenna Gizar here. I just wanna say thank you so much for coming over to our YouTube channel, hitting that subscribe button, liking this video so we can continue to create content that brings you life and happiness and laughter and gives God all the glory. We love you, we'll see you next time, bye.